Mental health is still top of our mind when it comes to African-American women tonight. It's a conversation that we had last night and how depression affects them differently. Joining us here on The Factor Uncensored is Dr. Christine Belliard and Saudi attorney LMFT. Great to have you guys back. I said, let's start this conversation all over again. What is most important to get out to black women who may be dealing with depression? Yes. I think what's most important is to know that this is not just a personal issue. Um, I keep thinking about the segment you had earlier with the grandmother. Looking at the faces of that family, you could see how it was affecting every single one mm -hmm. of them. And it's not just for tonight. That has all types of effects. And so if you can go on throughout your day and then think, oh, well, it's me. Why am I sad? She even, one of the young ladies said, I can't sleep. Mm -hmm. So it's important to recognize that these larger systemic oppressions really do affect us differently. And it shows up in being sleepless and feeling like, no, let me just do more things. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really important to know that you're not alone. It's not a you issue. It really is a systemic issue that shows up in our lives. And when you say systemic, that mm -hmm. means a community, that means family it's members. Everything. So how can we help out? Mm -hmm. I love that, um, that we're even thinking about how can we help out? Because usually it's, well, what's wrong with you? So yeah. this stigma against uh, mental health treatment, we have to, and I know that we're starting to break that, but to know that it is okay for us to talk about when someone feels like they really are having a hard time making it through the day, or they feel like they can't sleep at night, they're restless. So being able to listen, but then also to say, hey, you don't have to do this on your own. There are, there are resources, there are uh, therapists who look like you that understand your struggle. There's ways to connect and to heal. So, Saudi, how do you, and for the lack of a better term, how do you make that cute and in? Like, I gotta go see my therapist, girl. <laughs> <laughs> and then it becomes accepted. Right. You know, and more people start not buying into mm -hmm. it, but accepting it as a path to recovery. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's, it's so important to normalize that there, that life is hard. Mm -hmm. And there's so many different things that we're dealing with that it is unrealistic to think that we can take this journey alone and that we can carry the weight of trying to climb the corporate ladder and have children and look good and do all of those things and then all like Christine mentioned all of the external the systemic pressures that impact us and to do that perfectly and not need support is very unrealistic so the more we talk about it the more we normalize like we are we need community human beings in general we need community we need support we need our sisters we need our family members to help walk alongside us and we need professionals to help us in the journey as well and we know the reality of a pressure cooker when you cook something and you keep that pressure locked in and it mm -hmm. comes out it can be very ugly absolutely absolutely and it and it results in this is what I see often is a lot of times it's I will go on my own until I can't go anymore mm -hmm. and when I collapse mm -hmm. that's when I seek help when it's gotten to the place where it's ugly right where there's so many things that have fallen apart where your health has fallen apart your relationships are falling apart like the work that we do is part of educating like you don't have to wait till you can't carry it mm -hmm. anymore to ask for help like it can be just I want support like this is getting a little tough mm -hmm. Maybe I need to reach out now, reaching out before the pressure cooker explodes. What would be, what's, what's the most important point you want to bring out on this issue when, it, when we talk about black women and depression and dealing with it? Ooh, um, I think even though there's a lot of external things that impact us, that truly depression is feeling hopeless. Depression is feeling like you're in despair. And what we can do is start to step into our personal power. What can I do in my life to start shifting and to start making things better for me? So I have to pay attention to myself. Like, I just want black women to start listening to themselves. When something hurts, go to the doctor. When you feel like it's too much, give yourself permission to say it's too much. Maybe I just need to take a little step back, right? We have to start paying attention to our well-being before it gets to the point even of depression. And the ultimate issue, if you're dealing with depression and you don't seek the help that you need, and many people used to say, well, black people don't commit suicide, mm. the hell they don't. And mm. statistics are going up, Dr. Belliard. Oh, correct. And interestingly enough, there's less of a stigma on us going to physicians. So if you're having a heart attack, then we will say, you need to go to a doctor. 
Um, what we recognize, though, is that our mental health issues are showing up physiologically because we're not processing mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So it's important to just how we have destigmatized going to a doctor who actually is culturally competent. That's another thing. Don't just think you can go to any doctor and they're going to understand and treat you correctly. Um, so get referrals from people that, you know, are being treated correctly. Um, but beyond that, know that your mental health is just as important, if not more so, because black women, we lead with heart disease. And I believe it really is a matter of the heart. Mm -hmm. There's a dis-ease in your heart. Mm -hmm. And it's all the stress that we're carrying. And so it's also decolonizing our minds. Like, I don't have to think that I just have to produce, produce, produce. We have these narratives of what we're supposed to be to be successful. Oh, you, you're not married, you don't have kids, you don't have this right job. Mm -hmm. So I work with a lot of women who are high achieving. And they're like, well, I follow the brick road, the, the yellow brick road, and there's no pot of gold. Mm -hmm. So these narratives that we set up in our community as well. So it really is, when you ask a, a woman and they're being vulnerable, who are you really? Not the things you do, but who are you? So really answer, being able to answer, what brings you joy? Because joy, that's our biggest form of resistance for you to enjoy your life. You know, we deserve that. All right, we want to thank you both. And it's important, mm -hmm. get someone who understands what you're going through. They'll yes. tell you, get your black ass out here and take an aspirin. <laughs> And welcome back to The Factor on Censor. We're continuing our conversation about black women dealing with the depression and how it looks different. We have with us Saudi attorney and also Dr. Christine Belliard. So, Dr. Belliard, for those who may not be familiar with counseling and getting the help they need so they won't be scared to death, what does that look like? I love that question because there are some real fears like what am I signing up for? Am I going to be laid on a couch? So <laughs> I think it's important to one um, really do a bit of research. You can go to you can really Google and start looking for therapists. I always say one look at the language that a therapist shares on their site those types of things but what it actually looks like when you get with a good therapist who's culturally competent they really are trying to connect with you so the work should be on them to really ask questions to make you feel that this is a trustworthy space. So it really is processing what's, what's going on for you. So we're asking you questions like, really, what do you want to be different? What are your goals? And we really are working alongside you. So it's really not a scary thing if it's done right. It should be a healing thing. And of course, we know people like Dr. Angela yeah. Jones, who's here on The Factor, very credentialed, yes. yeah. very credible. What should you look for if you're not familiar with looking for a therapist or someone to talk you through your tough times? Absolutely. So a lot of times I get calls for people that are calling for medication and they're calling a therapist's office, not knowing that they're psychiatrists that prescribe medication and do very limited therapy. There are psychologists that do a lot of testing and assessments. Um, some do therapy and then they are therapists. And our job is to do that more weekly, sit in the office and have those in-depth conversations to get to the source of what is going on with whoever we're seeing. So it's important to know, you know, to look into, well, LMFT, what does that mean? Licensed Marriage and Family Therapist. Being able to ask those questions. Oh, you're an LPC, you're a licensed professional counselor. What does that mean? And feeling like the clinician is willing and open to answering any questions that you have is really important. To being able to, if you ask them what their form of treatment is, well, how do they treat depression? They should be able to answer those those questions for you freely and openly mm -hmm. and is it up to you to know if you need medication or is it up to your therapist or your doctor whomever is it up to them to know if you need medication so I think therapy is always a collaborative process mm -hmm. we make recommendations this is what we think we see, this is what may be helpful, but it really is a joint conversation, right? To get the client's beliefs where they feel like they are, and you can give your recommendations, but ultimately therapy is a place where you are empowering clients to make the right decisions for themselves. So you can give them all the information, all the pros and cons of taking medication, not taking medication, and then helping them come to a decision that feels right for them. And medication is not right for everyone, and especially with depression, because depression is a set of symptoms. That's all it is, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't tell us what the origin of this individual's per particular you have form to get of depression to the root is. You of do. The and medication won't solve every root. All right. We want to thank you both for joining us in this expanded conversation yes. here on The Factor.